Good morning and welcome to Namaste Today, a happy way to begin your day. I'm your heartfelt host and the sensei to serious joy, Christopher Witecki. This audio broadcast is for Wednesday, May 31st, 2017. It's the final day of May. Namaste. Well, today I predict to be actually a bit quiet. We are manifesting a new benchmark of our thinking. In today's Zodiac Weather, I'll talk about how Step 10 means you may find some sanity. And later in our tea time, after going through some experiences myself, I thought I'd share with you the topic of karma hotspots. But first, let's take a look at today's moods and your Zodiac Weather. This Zodiac Weather is for Wednesday, May 31st, 2017. And my global forecast for Planet Gaia is sunny and manifesting today. Step 10 Gemini rules the day and the moon shifts into Virgo, focusing on reality. Let's take a look at the planets. Well, I have to say the first 10 days of Gemini have not really been too much fun. Maybe that's because of the way my mind works, pretty hyper and somewhat anxious. But today, with Step 10 ruling the day, we build the platform of our thinking. Step 10 is what we love and hold space for, which means that your mind may need to be a little bit disciplined in order to love and hold space for a new type of thinking. Now, this new type of thinking may be thinking on a new level about a project, thinking on a new level about a relationship, thinking on a new level about yourself but you are putting into motion a new way of approaching, new words to use to describe, and a whole new value to a certain level of thinking. So this is a value-building day. This is definitely a day where your thoughts do create your reality. Now, what's fascinating is Mercury himself is in parallel. Mercury is at step 19 Taurus, a full sign behind due to the earlier retrograde. But it's at step 19, which also is I manifest. And it's in Taurus, which means we are likely also holding space for something literal that we're trying to manifest. The golden egg, if you will, the story you were born to live. So it's kind of a dual day. On the one hand, we're intellectualizing some new level of thinking. On the other, we're in a very practical way moving forward with a manifestation. So although it's a day of new thinking, it's also a day of getting the job done. The only real challenge of today may be your emotions. The moon moves into Virgo, nitpicky Virgo. In fact, the moon will be at only step one around 11 a.m. Pacific. So this means we move from a very jolly beginning with the moon in the high degrees of Leo into the practicalities of reality. And that may be actually where it takes discipline of the mind. Perhaps your mind will be focused on what it wants to achieve, but several little things or details in life will bug you. And so today, perhaps holding space for that right mind and for that right manifestation means that you have to baby yourself and self-nurture over the smallest little nitpicky things. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm in a cranky mood, I let myself get my way entirely. That's the only way I can get through it. And as we go through these first 11 degrees or 11 steps of the moon in Virgo, I suggest you let your inner baby get everything it wants because what we want to do is hold that tone of that new frame of mind and we don't want nitpicky emotions interfering. On a broader scale and on a bigger picture, we are slowly stepping up and opening up to this new vision of our own character and our own strength. Venus today is at step 24. Venus is what we open up to. We're attempting to open up to bliss. Step 24 adds to a six, and that high 24 is bliss. But it's Aries, which means bliss with ourself, being happy with ourself. And in the next 36 hours, Venus will open up to step 25, where it will trine Saturn at, in Sagittarius. And at that point, I believe we will be at peace with ourselves. So adding this all up, it appears that this new way of thinking, this new level of thinking, and these manifestations that we have in progress 
are actually the workings of us opening up to a greater person that we are. And it will be actually this Saturday on June 3rd when Venus will conjunct 26 degrees Uranus. And that will be the point on this Saturday that we will feel that we have finally opened up to our potential. So hang on, my friends. I know it's a climb up the staircase to heaven, and it's a hard one, but we are almost there. Sensei sees the light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, on Saturday, Step 13 Gemini will rule the day, and so as of that day, you will feel a breakthrough in your thinking and an achievement of reaching your potential. Today is really laying that foundation for that achievement to be made. Now, that said, with all these high planets, Saturn way at 25, Pluto way at 19, Uranus at 26, it brought up a topic that I thought that would be important to share with you, something I've been going through and something I want to share. So go steep yourself some tea. Let's have our daily tea time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. Today's tea time topic is karmic hot spots. I bring this topic up basically due to the late stages of several planets. We have Uranus at 26 degrees Aries. Uranus is a heavy hitter. Whatever Uranus hits means you're going to evolve or you're going to face whatever that issue is. We have Saturn way up at step 25 Sagittarius. Saturn is also a heavy hitter. Wherever Saturn hits says you need to grow up and take responsibility now, says Saturn. And even Pluto is up at step 19 Capricorn, which is fairly high, frankly. And Capricorn is a difficult sign. So Pluto has insisted that we're at least at step 19. What this means is these outer planets, which are the ones that really force us to face our issues and our karmic past, they're at high degrees, which means if they have crossed one of your karmic hot spots recently, you might have really felt it and experienced profound change. Now, what are the karmic hot spots? Well, I think the biggest hot spot, honestly, is Chiron. So if you know your natal astrology chart, wherever your Chiron is, it's a big hot spot. When I analyze my own life and the things I've gone through and I look at my chart, I'll be damned if most of the time it doesn't go back to Chiron. And it's not just Chiron, the wounded healer, but it's also the step number that Chiron happens to be at. So whatever step number that Chiron's at is kind of a step number that you're haunted by. And you may find, like in my chart, the Chiron step number is actually found in three other places, three other major places. So for me, my Chiron step number is really, truly haunted. So Chiron is a number that definitely the step number haunts us and the Chiron placement haunts us. I think it's the karma we were born feeling guilty about. And so whenever a planet strikes our Chiron, it sort of resonates with our soul. Now, the truth is, the moon crosses Chiron once a month. So if you know where your Chiron is and what step number it is, whenever the moon hits that spot, you're going to find you're at least slightly emotional about this particular issue. You may not realize it. In fact, 99% of the time, we project these feelings onto us being in the bank line or project them onto our work that we have to do or project them onto worry about something in our relationship. And we don't even realize that we just got struck on our Chiron hotspot. Another karmic hotspot is Black Lilith, old Black Lilith, which from my own uh, research is a place in your chart or a pa place in your past life where you fell down on your knees in total fury and anguish. It represents a highly emotional spot in your chart and the source of tremendous fear as well. And so each time the moon hits our black Lilith, we are usually struck with fear. We usually have a moment of fear. Again, we usually project it onto something in front of us, but it's that old spot sort of getting hit again, just like grandma's arthritis, right? 
Another karmic hot spot is our prenatal lunar eclipse. Now, this is the eclipse that happened before your birth. I look at the prenatal lunar and pre prenatal solar eclipses in my astrology because they're both hot spots. The lunar eclipse is a hot spot, though, that calls to a fear or an unknown. All right. And that's usually what it feels like an extreme unknown, kind of this pit of emptiness. I find whenever the moon hits my lunar eclipse, I have this feeling with the bottom falling out of my stomach. But my lunar eclipse is in Cancer, so it has to do with feeling itself. So I don't know. Mine might be a little bit more radical than yours. Another karmic hotspot is your south node, which, if you don't know, is in the opposite sign and the same degree as your north node. We always report the north node in our chart. But our south node is also extremely sensitive and a karmic hotspot. So if a planet hits this spot, you're going to feel a resonance. Now, what sort of resonance do we feel? Well, I'm bringing this up just because I'm sharing. I have Chiron in Aries at 19 degrees. And so really for the last year or so, Uranus has crossed over my Chiron. And now Venus has recently crossed over my Chiron. And boy, it has actually been very tough. Because a lot of the fears that we think we're over with, we think that we're done with, we thought that we got rid of that when we were 30 or 35 or whatever, suddenly come up. And what I realized was, oh, even though I've worked on these and overcome these, this karmic hotspot is being struck. Now, with Uranus striking it, it was actually calling for me to take this wound higher now. It's like we don't need to live in this wound. And that's one of the things about Chiron and whatever step number your Chiron is. I find that with myself and with my clients, they stay stuck at that step number. They don't climb up to the step following or the step following. They stay stuck at that step and stuck at that step. And when it comes to manifestation, I find that whatever step number your Chiron is at, you tend to stay stuck at that step as well. Your life can't quite get past that step. That is the wounded step number. And any planet that has that step number kind of harmonizes with that wound when that part of us goes down. So when Uranus hit my Chiron, suddenly I had to stand tall once again in areas I thought I was already tall in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, damn it! And not only that, but really have the courage to see past where the, this particular issue, like what's after this part of the story? We know that the hero gets hung up at this step over and over again. What's past it? How do we get past it? And I have gotten past it, but then Venus recently crossed my crime run, and that was me really opening up my life to these new changes, which you think you're over it because now you're strong. Oh no, now you need to open up to the effects of this change. So it's like, <laughs> once again, that karmic hotspot is kind of getting strummed. I think many of us, you know, so this comes from the readings that I do. I, I've had a, many of my clients, we're all kind of in this harmony. Many clients going through their Chiron return, which is also a karmic hotspot moment. We are really trying to shake off some of our ancient worries and concerns and karmic patterns. And there's a lot of noise going on that I haven't been reporting on because many of you are getting hit in your karmic hotspots and many of you are getting called to grow past where you once left off, okay? Particularly in our Black Liliths and our Chirons. And I think there's also a positive hotspot that I want to leave for you. And those positive hotspots are Jupiter and Juno. Okay, Juno is a particular hotspot that tells us when we can fall into wonderful synastry with life in the moment. Okay, So the moon does cross your Juno once a month. And the universe does try to give you a smile and make just everything work in your favor for that period of time. So we have a good karmic hotspot there. And of course, whenever the moon crosses Jupiter, Jupiter is our karmic good fortune hotspot. It's where we have treasure waiting for us. Ironically, when I do readings, most of my clients tend to want to ignore where their Jupiter is. And that's exactly why there's a bunch of fortune there. Because our soul turns our back on this opportunity over and over again. But when the moon crosses Jupiter once a month or other these other planets cross Jupiter, you are opened up to the fortune that you have come to receive. So that's a positive hotspot. They're not all challenging. 
Well, my friend, good luck with your karmic hotspots. I'll be here to help you along the way. I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you telling your friends and family about this show, by the way. And I appreciate all the comments. Don't forget, we have a club on Facebook. If you want to rub elbows with other light walkers, come down to namastetoday.club. All right, I'll see you tomorrow with more. Until then, remember I love you and live, love, be. Live, love, be.